Yeah. Why do you think that the relentless parade of vapid comic book superhero movies remains so popular? Alan Moore, creator of the iconic comic books From Hell and V for Vendetta, was roundly condemned by, surprise, surprise, the very people he was referring to when he dared voice an unsayable truth. The reason comic book superhero movies are so popular is because an entire generation of 30-something millennials and even some Gen Xers have chosen to freeze their brains in a state of permanent adolescence. The West is overrun by fragile man-babies regressing back to their childhoods because of their sheer terror at the prospect of adulthood. <laughs> What exactly did Alan Moore say? I think the impact of superheroes on popular culture is both tremendously embarrassing and not a little worrying. While these characters were originally perfectly suited to stimulating the imaginations of their 12 or 13 year old audience, today's franchised uber mention aimed at a supposedly adult audience seem to be serving some kind of different function and fulfilling different needs. Primarily, mass market superhero movies seem to be abetting an audience who do not wish to relinquish their grip on A, their relatively reassuring childhoods, or B, the relatively reassuring 20th century. What I'm gonna do if it doesn't. <laughs> He's Moore went on to point out that superhero movies made for children remaining so popular amongst adults is not only an indictment of the increasingly infantilized nature of the individual, it's another telltale sign that our culture in general is mired in a state of insipid stagnation. The continuing popularity of these movies to me suggests some kind of deliberate self-imposed state of emotional arrest combined with a numbing condition of cultural stasis that can be witnessed in comics, movies, popular music, and indeed right across the cultural spectrum. Alan Moore is right. We've all been socially engineered to overshare, to become emotionally incontinent, blubbering, testosterone deficient wrecks, to the point where we can barely handle reality, and react by sucking our thumbs and embracing the cotton wool infancy of superhero safe spaces. But Paul, you loved the Joker. That's a superhero comic book movie. No, it isn't. It's a deeply disturbing intimate origin story that's nothing whatsoever like, for example, the Marvel movies. Joker is for adults. Marvel movies are for children. Martin Scorsese is right. Superhero comic book films are not cinema. They're theme parks inside cinemas. And theme parks are for children. Star Wars. That's also for children. When I was growing up in the late 80s and early 90s, the only people who liked Star Wars were kids below the age of 12. <laughs> Bruh. Notice how an army of woke cumbrains rush to the defense of this guy because they're also mental juveniles stuck in a permanent state of stunted adolescence. Bruh. No one with a fully developed prefrontal cortex should get this emotional over a children's movie. It's not normal adult behavior. And sure, I can look forward to seeing a movie, an adult movie, because Star Wars is for children, but the only time when I can ever remember getting this excited over consuming a product was when I was about seven years old. Bruh. Crying over the anticipation of consuming a product is for children. <laughs> this is gonna work, Steve. <laughs> the 38 year old consumer doesn't ask questions, just consumes product and then gets excited for next products, thinks watching comic book movies is doing politics, political views appeal to no one other than other consumers, political views entirely focused around being vindictive towards people who were mean to him in high school in 1997, poor white people are suffering in the Midwest, should have consumed the correct product, thinks everyone else's political opinions both to the left and right of him are based simply on chauvinistic biases which he obviously does not have, unironically thinks doing video reviews of movies for children is a significant contribution to society. Halloween, that's for children. But every year, adult Americans appear to become more obsessed and start preparing earlier and earlier for something that's clearly meant for kids. For children. Throwing violent tantrums because you didn't get your food. Fist fights, car crashes, even a murder. Yeah, this is gonna sound pretty ridiculous, but all of that is over a chicken sandwich. Or because he didn't get it quick enough. Well, you guys have no Szechuan sauce? No. I want Szechuan sauce. Where's my Szechuan sauce? That 
that's for children throwing violent hissy fits because you didn't get the opportunity to consume a product quick enough. <laughs> That's for children. Emotional support pets. That's for children. The rise in popularity of adult colouring books. That's for children. Pretending to be a baby in diapers while frolicking around in a playpen to satiate you and your boyfriend's weird fetish. Age play is not sexually stimulating to me in any way, shape or form. That's not for children. Millennials are so innately infantile that they had to invent a word to remind them how to behave like adults. Adulting. To carry out one or more of the duties and responsibilities expected of fully developed individuals, paying off that credit card debt, settling beef without blasting social media, etc. Exclusively used by those who adult less than 50% of the time. Inventing words to make normal adult behaviour sound like some kind of astounding achievement just to make yourself feel special. Mm, that's for children. It's not just movies, but also TV shows that are becoming increasingly more lowbrow to meet the needs of a sophomoric audience. Comedy and late night shows, which once at least reached for some pretense of sophistication, now reduced to puerile immature nonsense. Toilet humour that up until 10 or 15 years ago, most people would have said was for children. The dumbing down of television news also condescends to us like we're little kids. CNN using cartoons to explain Obamacare. They don't have health insurance. Not good if you're worried about falling down a hill. BBC News presenters having to explain what the word capital means. There's been a huge plunge as well into capital coming into the country. Capital, just money coming into the country. You devaluate the currency, inflation goes up, it's a mess. Assuming a level of intellect that would normally be ascribed to children, given that these perpetual juveniles never want to grow up and embrace adulthood. Is it any wonder that birth rates in the US have plunged to a 30-year low? With people waiting longer and longer, sometimes into their 40s before they have kids. Is this obsession with superheroes also related to the increasingly atomized nature of society and the breakdown of the family? If your real father is some jobless, three-time divorced loser with an opioid addiction, Maybe it's just easier to pretend Thor is your dad, but deluding yourself into thinking the king of Asgard is your father... That's for children. In the 90s and early 2000s, we were told to embrace the moment, to live in the now. But now that the now seems so unbearable, so terrifying, millennials appear to be constantly trying to flee to the safety of their childhood past. The ones who aren't permanently drugged on antidepressants find other ways to reach that state of blissful disassociation. Is it any wonder that ketamine is now the drug of choice for many 30-somethings? Ketamine is the new E. As Anna Silman writes, in 2019 escaping isn't just something you do for fun, it's a survival tactic at a time where the world feels so inescapably stressful and out of control, ketamine puts life on airplane mode. What? Having to sedate yourself with horse tranquilizer to dampen reality itself like the chemical equivalent of the time out room, that's for children. According to a new Canada University Laval study, Binge porn watching is also literally causing brain damage that leads to overly impulsive behaviour, like in children. It's somewhat paradoxical that adult entertainment may revert our brain wiring to a more juvenile state. According to Professor Paul Kindlin, America is suffering from an epidemic of arrested emotional development. AED. AED is characterized by some combination of addiction, greed, immaturity, fear, blame, shame, resentments, anger, confusion, and suffering. This is manifesting itself everywhere. From the hasty adoption of LGBT identity simply as a means of ascribing to oneself uniqueness and eliciting narcissism assuaging attention, to rampant exaggeration and oversimplification, labelling everyone who disagrees with you a Nazi, and immediately resorting to vicious personal attacks when someone challenges your opinion. The inability to accept responsibility and failure, to react with violent disrespect by defacing monuments and destroying property. AED is everywhere. And up until the last decade, any rational observer would have treated such symptoms as the sole domain of children. And I get it. A lot of millennials have no choice but to live with their parents because boomers ruined the economy by causing massive property inflation and stagnating wages. And that's stunting their development into adulthood. But aside from the economic factors, a lot of this seems to be born out of social and cultural engineering. Now it's socially acceptable for adults to cry over superhero movies, throw public tantrums over Szechuan sauce, 
and desperately flee from the mere hint of any form of responsibility in life. But that's not for adults. That's for children. It's absolutely crucial for you to help me fight the war on free speech by supporting me via subscribe star, link in description, and also signing up for my free newsletter at summit.news forward slash newsletter.